Our next speaker is going to be uh, Dr. Maciej Gavetsky, who's going to be talking to us on the subliminal treatment for central serous chorea retinopathy. Maciej, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this uh, fantastic symposium. And I would like to share my views and also my experience about subliminal laser in the treatment of central serous chorioretinopathy. Uh, this is quite well known a clinical entity. However, its origin, its etiology, and also approach to its treatment, it's not yet well understood. So we are used to use two terms, one uh, as defining uh, central theros. The one is um, acute form of this disease, which predominantly involves subretinal fluid, and it usually spontaneously resolves within three to four months but it also can um, appear in the chronic form, which lasts longer, usually longer than four months or even can last years. It's characterized by multifocal changes, which are well visible on fluorescent and geography. Also uh, um, appearance of cyst, fibrin in subretinal fluid, also bullous subretinal detachment. We can well think, we can rationalize whether this classification is correct, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. So what is the course of CSCR? It's quite well known that the uh, majority of cases uh, are resolved spontaneously. However, um, we have problems with the patients in, which, in whom symptoms persist for a longer period of time. We know that CSCR can present in recurrent form. It, uh, happens in approximately 30 to 50 percent of cases. We also know that it can be complicated by secondary CMD, which is a choroidal neurovascularization, and it's a serious complication. Since we have uh, angio OCT as a diagnostic tool, we know that the percentage of patients with this complication is quite high. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's even uh, up to 18 percent. Um, in chronic form, we can also observe some significant decrease in best corrected visual acuity. So uh, we have to realize that it's not always a benign disease, as it's quite often approached as. What are the therapeutic modalities in this disease? Well, I placed subliminal laser therapy at the first place because it's very effective. We know from many, many publications so far that uh, the effectiveness of uh, subliminal laser, um, mainly the yellow laser, is up to 70-80% in respect of uh, resolution of subretinal fluid. But we have to say that low fluence PDT is also a very attractive form of therapy because it's also highly effective. Place trial prove that. However, we have to realize that it's invasive, it involves injection of dye, and also it can well cause a sensitiveness to the light, the skin irritations. So we are losing, using mineralocorticoid inhibitors, a plerenone. However, again, opinions about its efficacy uh, are divided, we can say. We have conservative therapies, uh, like oral drugs, uh, rifampicin, non-steroid you know, anti-inflammatory drugs, or even aspirin. However, um, uh, its efficacy is not confirmed in large randomized studies. In certain uh, cases, focal photocoagulation is still used. We know that it has been a main form of therapy for many, many years. However, it's limited to the cases where the leakage point is safely located outside the fovea. And then we also have anti-VGF treatment, but this works only in patients uh, in whom uh, choroidal neurovascularization uh, develops. So there are some questions that have to be asked when we analyze this disease. Does it really result in decrease of quality of vision? Because when we, when we speak about acute forms, sometimes we do not treat it very seriously. If we approach acute form of central serous. We are usually used to waiting for a few months for spontaneous remission. Is it rational 
we really don't know if the disease becomes chronic or not. And then if we wait those four months, why four months? Why not two months, for example? Where does this recommendation come from? Now, well, when we dig into that, we know that this comes from the times from before like 30 or 40 years when, as I said, laser photocoagulation was the main form of treatment. And as it was invasive and as it, uh, in fact, works through uh, the SCAR, RPE SCAR, then we didn't want to, to perform this treatment very eagerly in every case. So that's why we were giving patient a chance to, to spontaneously uh, cure. However, now I think the, the, the approach should change because we have more non-invasive therapies. And this is um, the scan that gives us an example of what can happen in the chronic form of CSTR. We see very serious retinal thinning and despite successful treatment, because subretinal fluid resolved, we have significant decrease in visual acuity due to loss of photoreceptors. And this again, similar case, and we see on the OCT map that the, the retina is very thin in the fovea. So we should avoid situations like that, or at least we should try to avoid it. So was this damage, possible potential damage of CSTR measure. Well, there was some, some colleagues tried to do that, for example, colleagues from Netherlands uh, in 2016 and uh, colleagues from States in 2019 showed that uh, central cells can cause serious visual loss. For example, in the second quite fresh paper, um, we see that um, close to 13% of patients are legally blind due to bilateral central serous that lasts many years because that's possible we also i mean me we our group from poland we also tried to measure it and we um, analyzed the group of patients that we treated and we um, saw that in, in the group where um, symptoms lasted on the average for one, a year and a half uh, we had the average loss of four lines on the Snellen chart on the Snellen chart we see it here, and also significant retinal thinning in the central part. When we compare it with the control group, we see that it's close to 40 micrometers lost. So that, that explains also, um, well, declining in best corrective visual acuity. When we look at the OCTA, NGOCT, um, in those groups, here we have the normal OCTA in the control group, and then when we see patients uh, after resorption of uh, subretinal fluid, fluid, we see that on the level of chorea capillaries, we, ha we have spots of uh, signal void. So the, the spots where co co chorea capillaries doesn't really work or they are not perfused. So that also uh, explains nutrition problems for the photoreceptors that happen in chronic CSTR. So to sum up, we wanted to go further. We tried to check whether the early treatment, early meaning in, in, in the form of central cells that we consider acute, could work better for the patients, meaning could, work, could um, provide us better visual out, outcome. So we, we took 32 patients with central cells retinopathy lasting from three weeks to uh, to, to, to less than six months, and we performed subliminal laser, yellow laser, uh, in a traditional way, the, in the, using the protocol um, uh, that uh, was developed by Quantel. So with duty cycle of 5%, uh, the, the spot size diameter of 160 micrometers and uh, 0.2 seconds time. But I, from my experience, used fixed power parameters between 250 and 300 milliwatts. However, um, I do not criticize uh, that much titration. However, in, from my experience, those fixed parameters also work well. So they are, they are quite efficient. We performed uh, baseline examinations and follow-up examinations that included best corrected visual acuity, fluorescence, and geography at the beginning. And then the patients were followed mainly with 
with OCT exams. When we see the results, we see significant improvement in best corrected visual acuity. We say that after treatment, it's 0.2 in logmar before it was 0.37, and also reduction in central retinal thickness. However, what's in, our, in my opinion, my colleagues, most important is the correlation between the early treatment and uh, better visual acuity. When you look at it, here we see that it's very uh, the the statistical significance of final visual acuity and early treatment is very significant so the patients in whom we performed yellow micropulse laser uh, just uh, very early after um, presentation of symptoms final visual acuity was definitely better of course we can argue and we can we know that some of these patients would have resolved spontaneously, but we don't know how many. We don't know what would be the percentage. So we gave those patients who had potentially a chance to become chronic a chance for a better vision. That's my opinion. And we are not the only ones who observed that even short standing subretinal fluid can cause damage to the Reddit retina. These are the two um, papers from. Uh, 2013 that show a uh, significant uh, thinning of, for example, outer nuclear layer, even after one month of duration of central cells. Um, there is also a comparative study by, by Dr. Arora. He observed that um, patients in acute CSTR who are treated early had better final Acuity than those that were just observed. We see that in Logmar, it's definitely better result and also better contrast sensitivity in micropulse group. So when we look at this, there are some important questions also from the our rational thinking, but also when we look at the studies that are available, we know that maybe class standard traditional classification of chronic and acute form of CSTR is not rational, maybe it should be simple or complex, depending on the, the morphological um, appearance on OCT and question and geography at presentation. Then we know that there is no simple relation between duration of CSTR and final visual acuity. So we never know whether the, the acute patient becomes chronic. Then the question about the timing of initiation of treatment uh, also appears. So I have my recommendations, of course, these are the recommendations that are to be discuss, discussed with, with colleagues and also checked in randomized trials. So I recommend early subliminal laser after four weeks or even at presentation with patients with acute form of CSCR, I don't see why not use non-damaging retinal therapy to shorten the course of the disease. Then, if we have patients with chronic form lasting longer, lasting months or longer than four months, then we have a choice between subliminal laser, which I would do in the first place because it's cheap, it's uh, not uh, troublesome for the patient, but I would also consider photodynamic therapy in cases unresponsive to subliminal laser. Um, and a plurinon, I'm at least uh, from my experience using as a supportive therapy also for unresponsive cases. Well, I hope that uh, these presentations gave you some thoughts and gave you some um, some questions because this is always an idea of a symposium like that and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monsieur.